Charge your batteries, lock in those props, and check that airspace. Join us live. This is the Drone Owners Network. Oh, look who's back. Hi, everybody in the house. This is the Drone Owners Network live. Glad to have everybody back. Uh, yeah, we're back in our normal time. We appreciate you guys hanging in there. want to check and make sure that uh, everything's working. Hey, wow, there's... Wow, there's fancy graphics playing on the screen right now. Uh, let's see. So what we got going on today? We got some fun stuff happening, some big fun stuff. Randy Foster is joining us. Uh, Randy, where are you at right now? I am in Miami, Florida. All the way over there in Miami, Florida. And uh, James Jackson's joined us. James, where are you at? Uh, Cape Town, South Africa. Cape Town, South oh, Wow. And then we got Telly Scott who's joining us today. Where are you at, Telly? Oh, got to get that mic on. All right. Uh, I'm in uh, Johnsville, Ohio. Ohio. And and then our favorite news guy, Mr. Tommy Polo, is in the house. Tommy, what's going on? Uh, where are you at? What's good? What's good? I am in the armpit of America in New Jersey, right <laughs> next to the refinery explosion. Ooh, big boom, <laughs> huh? But unfortunately, I was in the Poconos camping when that happened, so I didn't get to feel any of the, any any of the quaking. Cool. Well, hey, we're gonna we got a lot to talk about on the show, so let me uh, let me just jump right into the news right here. Ooh. And here with your news is Mister Tommy Polo. Happy Saturday to everyone. Let's see what we got going on this week. We have Air Map. Everybody knows Air Map. Uh, Raytheon. Anybody know the name Raytheon? Sound familiar? Well, of course. Raytheon. Oh, we got one that knows. Okay. I kind of figured you would know it. You, you, you know this kind of stuff. But for everybody else that doesn't know, Raytheon is, uh, is, is working on the it's, – it's a technology and innovation leader specializing in defense, civil government, and cybersecurity solutions. Uh, they're working together with AirMap in a strategic agreement to collaborate on future projects for safe integration of drones into NAS, which is national air, national airspace system, which is, this will be, this will be nice. This is, this is working on towards the integration of drones being recognized in the air, just like an airplane would be airplanes, helicopters, anything aerial that's in the sky has to be, you know, obviously we want to know what's going on. It's not like, like uh, cars on the street where it's, you know, it's obviously beep a horn or <laughs> flash your headlights or something like that. Air's a little different. You, you, know, you got ups and downs, lefts and rights. But the Raytheon and AirMap are working together to, to start the, uh, the, the integration of this, which is nice because uh, Air, AirMap, as we know, there, there's a lot of controversy here. Some people hate AirMap. Some people love AirMap. But the, the thing is, they're, they're the biggest right now. Uh, they're the leading provider of airspace intelligence for UAS or drone operations with over 250,000 registered users in, as of 2018. Uh, a majority of the United States registered commercial pilots use AirMap and, and in 2018 requested over 45,000 automated authorizations to fly in controlled airspaces. So then working together with Raytheon to get into the official integration with air traffic control and everybody so you know with with dji air sense is coming it's it, it's it's big stuff and that's that's going to bring me into this next story about about dji now dji we have not seen any major release from dji in 2018 not a major release uh except for you know we got the robomaster s1 that you know that launched this this month um there was a lot of guesses and speculation as to what was going to be. We had you know, everybody saying, oh, there's going to be a Spark 2, or oh, they're getting into FPV racers, or, or the, you know, the, Phantom, the Phantom 5, but the Phantom 5's discontinued. So we, but we don't know. But, but what they did get into was into the educational robotics. Now, this seems to be getting bigger and bigger. I know my kids are seeing it. A lot of other people are seeing it. All this, all, they're pushing coding. All, everybody's training with coding and robotics, which is, have you ever watched a sci-fi movie, man? It's, it's, it's all... <laughs> It's all coming. It's, I don't know. It's, it, it, I get a kick out of it, but it's neat. But we have the RoboMaster followed the Osmo, the DJI Osmo Action, which was released. Um, but nothing, nothing that that would be like a flagship, like last year, you know, with the Maverick Two and the, 
you know, with the fam, nothing, nothing big. We've had, we had so far in, in 2019, we've had the Maverick 2 Enterprise Duel with the Fleer, um, Smart Controller. Uh, they put out improved fleet management software. They had the Manifold 2, the big box that goes in the M2 and the M, or the M210 and 600s. Uh, DJI Terra mapping software. There's still a lot going on, but there just hasn't been a whole, a, a big, big release. Which seems to be like it might be highlighting a like a slowdown, like kind of a little plateau in the consumer and the prosumer drones. Like people just going out to buy a drone, it's it's it, it's kind of tapering off. In 2014, their their revenue growth, DJI's revenue growth was 300 percent. In 2015, it went to 100 percent, which is still it's amazing, but it, it it's it, it's tapering off. Even with even like even their their, their biggest competitor, Parrot they're not even close. I mean, DJI is just, they, they, they've conquered the market from, from everything from, from the Tello all the way up. They have the Tello as, as, as a low price point. The, 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 the Matrice series is a huge price point, but they, ha they have everything in between. I mean, they're, they're, they're everywhere. So what we're seeing is nothing 100% new, but AirSense, I think, is going to be the next big thing. There's still maybe talk of a Spark too, but uh, Air, AirSense is going to be the next big thing. Like I said, with Raytheon and Aramap and the integrations, I want to say stay tuned, and we're going to learn some more as as this progresses and keep on top of this because um, it's neat. It's it's it, it, it's a lot of stuff going on with with the integration of us into official airways and you know all that fun stuff. But without further ado, we're going to move along because I know we have we have a lot a lot of big stuff to talk about tonight. So, last story is. Fluidity. Curtis? All right, all right, that's the news. All right, guys. So uh, we had a show a couple weeks ago with uh, Scott Parazinski, uh, astronaut and entrepreneur, and we uh, we had a little talk about his, uh, his invention, the Fluidity, the FT Aviator. And as it turns out, Scott is based in Houston, and we are lucky enough to have not one, not two, but three of the guys on our staff uh, also living, well, two living in Houston, one nearby Houston. Uh, and they had a chance to go down and hang out with Scott for the day and get a chance to fly with the fluidity. Now, that's not all we have, so stick around. There's a lot more going on than just what we're fixing to do right now. But anyway, we uh, while we were there, James Jackson uh, was filming. Randy had some audio things that he, he was doing and a whole bunch of other stuff, and we managed to put together a nice little uh, clip for you guys, and we're going to play that right now, and then afterwards we're going to come back and talk about the fluidity. Welcome to Houston. Welcome to Fluidity. I'm really excited to share the FT Aviator with you. It's an amazing drone flight controller that really makes drone flight control incredibly intuitive, almost a subconscious act. I can control all four primary uh, axes of the drone with my a movement of up and down of my thumb, and then with a stick, forward, aft, left, right, and then twisting the stick. And then with my non-dominant hand, you can, you can be a righty or lefty with this thing, you control the camera asset. So this is the tilt axis. And then we also have you know, the ability to start and stop video, take photographs, toggle through really important, you know, commonly accessed features of uh, the camera system, the shutter speed, exposure compensation, and so on. And I, I always know when I'm making a command and when I'm not. And the reason that's important is to eliminate what's called cross-coupling. With a traditional two-thumb controller, you oftentimes see when you move with your, your left thumb, you may get a little bit of a left yaw drift. And then with your, your right thumb, if you're moving forward, you oftentimes will have a little bit of a, a trend right with your thumb, that means you're going forward and a little bit of a drift to the right. It, it results in lack of precision. And what the Fluidity FT Aviator is about is, is delivering precision to the pilot. So the FT Aviator is compatible with the vast majority of uh, DJI products from the Mavic Air, uh, the Mavic Pro, the, the two, um, the Enterprise, uh, Inspire 1 and 2, uh, Phantom 3 and 4, uh, the Matrice series all the way up to the M600. Uh, so we have a lot of versatility. Depending on your radio, uh, you could either use a lanyard directly onto the, uh, the clip of the, uh, the radio as here for the, the Phantom 4, or we use a, a special uh, belly band that we ship with the product. And what this allows you to do is carry your, your Mavic series radio on a lanyard. And uh, there's a little 
handy hole here to allow you to connect to the USB port on that radio. We call it the surfboard here, but it's a, um, an appliance that sits on the side of the controller. We can mount our smartphone in here, and, um, and then uh, we're going to be uh, still using the, the DJI radio in the circuit. It can either be you know, sitting next to us, we can also carry it on a lanyard, so we'll set that up here in a minute. We have, actually have an adjustable thumb loop here, so you squeeze these little tabs, and if you've got a big beefy thumb, you can fit it in there. If you've got a tiny little thumb, you can squeeze it all the way down, but you adjust it to, to comfort. And what we're doing here, this is the collective or the throttle, we can either pull up with our thumb or squeeze with our index finger. That's going to cause us to ascend with the drone, and to descend, you just simply press down. There's a dynamic balance, so you can actually have very, very uh, precise, almost rheostatic control of, of your altitude as you're flying. It's, it's really uh, pretty cool. Um, some people will want to uh, carry this in their non-dominant hand. Other people may want to use this brass insert, a quarter 20, so a typical tripod insert. You can mount it, mount it on the side of a chair, wherever you'd like. Um, I like it this way because I, I can have my hand right on the camera controls and, and uh, it just feels very comfortable to me. We're going to go ahead and power on our FT Aviator. You'll see the colored lights on the display up here. But uh, let's go ahead and launch the app here. So what you see here is our uh, initialization page. We've got a hamburger here that will tell us our uh, app version, the firmware version, and so on. And then we have the whole ecosystem for FD Aviator. So starting with our FD Aviator, our smartphone, our DJI radio, and the drone itself. So you can see our battery percentages in each asset, as well as the connectivity between them. Everything's blue, we're good to go, we're ready to fly. So we'll hit go fly. I'm gonna bring in my buddy, uh, George. He's actually the co-founder of the company and we're gonna do a pre-flight and a safety brief. Uh, we've already checked the airspace. Uh, things look good, filed our land sea. Uh, this is a, a place with uh, you know, folks wandering around. We're gonna obviously not fly over people. We're gonna kind of bias ourselves over to the, uh, the left here. And um, we have some special procedures with the FT Aviator. In the event of loss of communication, we'll take uh, the, the radio uh, from P to A and then back to P. And there's actually a pop-up on the app that you'd see as you, as you launch the app. So there's a reminder for, for pilots flying the FT Aviator. Yeah, so uh, we've done all our firmware updates on all the drones. Uh, we've updated all the maps, so I think we're ready to go. I concur. Why don't you take the, the Phantom 4 down to the pad and uh, I'll follow you down with the, uh, Sounds great. the radios. Cool. Well, that was really cool. Uh, kudos to James Jackson. James, that dude, that was an excellent, excellent job there. Uh, yeah, team little, effort for sure. Little round of applause for James. Man, that's like professional stuff. Oh wait, you all, are a prof this is what you do for a living, isn't it? Yeah. All shot on an iPhone four, which is amazing. <laughs> it's, it's, it's not amazing. Shot it on an iPhone four. <laughs> I wish you guys would have done some of the behind the scenes stuff, some of the uh, uh, other stuff that I've seen where James is actually holding that red epic camera. It's a red epic, right? Yeah. Yeah, where James is holding epic, it and right? he's he's doing some of those moves to get that that little butter, that little the little gliss in there or whatever it is you call it, the little dance that he's doing. I thought that's pretty cool. But uh, hey, we want to we want to do some shout outs real quick into the uh, chat room. Welcome a, whole, welcome a whole bunch of people. Phantom Flight 101 is here. William R. is always here. Idaho Quadcopter. Oh, Stig is in the house. How about that? Phantom Flight 101. Is that Herman Green? Yeah, Herman's like, in the I house. Love, yeah. I love watching them guys. Good stuff. Uh, Lauren Donner's here. Uh, let's see. Uh, pot, pot, Port Clinton Duck is here. John Appeal. Uh, and Paul Murray is here. All right. Paul's in the house. Uh, so you guys had a chance to go down there and fly with uh, Scott, and we wanted to get some of your views on uh, what you actually thought of the fluidity 
And uh, maybe you could be enticed to hold up your fluidity and show everybody that you have one. Anybody want to jump in first? Uh, maybe Randy? I'll jump in. So here it is. Um, really slick um, device. It's, uh, I mean, it's, it's straight out of like, you know, Top Gun. It's, it's, yeah. it's, it's that kind of a feel to it. Um, it was really interesting uh, getting to fly, for one, with an astronaut. How many people get to say that they have had that opportunity? That was definitely cool. But the product that he came up with is is actually really slick. And I know that there's a lot of uh, people that, you know, man, they're just wondering how this fits into their workflow. Um, I'll tell you, I, I had the same question. And it wasn't until I actually put one in my hands and commanded the aircraft, aircraft that I fly so often and so traditionally with two thumbs and you know it's it's just that same that same thing over and over this was actually fun to fly it was it it kind of i don't know it, it brought back a lot of excitement to flying again um yeah it's the same aircraft but it's doing it in a very different and unique way um it's it's really slick there's a lot of really cool features that are packed into this device um but just the just putting your hands on this thing and and flying this around is just a heck of a lot of fun. So I know that, um, you know, we, if you buy a DJI aircraft, it comes with an RC. I know you can fly it with just the regular RC, but this is just totally cool. It's really cool. Um, not only that, Scott, uh, he, he mentions it in the video. Um, it's a thing called cross coupling. And I think that I can safely say that every one of us has suffered from cross coupling at some point or another. I know, and I'll, I'll be very transparent here, I've done many moves where I have to really concentrate to make sure that I don't initiate uh, some unintended yaw uh, into my commands as I'm flying. And I mean, it's just it's just the product of, of using your thumbs or even in the pinch method uh, with a traditional two stick controller. This really does take away a lot of that cross coupling because it's a very intentional movement and you feel the feedback in the device and as you as you go it, it makes it very hard to cross couple um if you want to do an intentional movement like that where you're forward and you're pitching you can do that but if you just want to go forward it's going to go straight forward it's really it's really slick it, it, it does add a lot of precision to your flying so i'll let the other guys speak to it as well but uh those were my initial impressions um but mainly it, it was just a lot of fun to fly it really brought a smile to my face and when i was uh in that video i think you guys saw me uh, picking up this thing um, and uh, flying with Scott, and it was just fun. It was really fun, and it feels very good in the hand. And it's I don't know, you just you just really want to just be able to fly with it. It's really cool. It makes you want to fly. So some people were saying it looks heavy. I is it heavy? I mean, you and I were talking about this yesterday, and you literally held it up with two fingers. I mean, it's yeah. This thing, this thing. If I can get enough light on, there you go. This thing is about a pound. It's not heavy. I mean, it's, it's got a little bit of weight to it, but nothing that is, uh, it, it probably weighs about as much as a, uh, I want to say either probably between say a Phantom four radio and a Mavic radio somewhere in there. It's about that. So, I mean, it feels, the weight feels very familiar. It feels very on par with any other DJI controller. It feels solid, like quality solid. That kind yeah, of feel. It, it, it is, it is. I mean, it's obviously got this base that has a lot of the camera controls and things like that on it. Um, but you know, everything happens here, you know, and that is where all that action happens. And here's your yaw, you twist, wow. you know, and it's, uh, it's just, everything is very intuitive. So what you think it should do, it does. Wow. One of the thing I want you to point out before we go, I'm going to go to telly next, but one of the thing I want you to point out is the, uh, it, it's set up and ready to go out of the box for a tripod. I've had several people ask me about that. There it is. So you don't, you don't got to buy nothing else but a tripod. Or any, any sort of, uh, you know, anything that say, if you're a cinematographer and you're using a magic arm, uh, obviously anything in the, in the television world, we use quarter 20 stuff every day. This is a quarter 20. It's a brass insert. So you're going to get the, the, the longevity out of it because, you know, it's not some threaded piece of plastic. That thing is there and it's, it's, it's a real, you know, brass insert. So when you screw down into it, whether it's on a tripod head, whether it's on a, a magic clamp into a, an arm, whatever you want to do to mount this wherever you want it, um, it's going to be a secure connection. I haven't done it on a tripod yet, um, but I know someone who has, and he has 
uh, spent a day flying with it that way. And I'm going to let him speak to what it's like to fly on a tripod. So we're going to go over to Telly Scott, who's had a, had a lot of, uh, he's, he got one first. And if you've been in some of the groups that he's in, he's been posting a lot about it. Telly, a, a couple of the questions right off from the chat group. Lauren Donner wants to know, how is it powered? And William R. wants to know, how is the altitude control uh, with thumb and index finger button? Can you vary the ascent and descent rates? Um, okay, the battery is built in. I flew uh, yesterday. I, she was for at least three and a half hours. Um, it, it went to from four uh, LEDs illuminated to three. I had plenty of, of life left. Uh, I, I've had so much fun with this thing. Uh, for the altitude, it, it has a, uh, where you can raise up on it with your thumb. I, I can't do that. My thumb isn't strong enough. I've got some issues. Um, so you pull the trigger to uh, to raise up an altitude. Uh, you can go as fast as you want to. You, you squeeze harder, it raises it faster. Um, you push down to, uh, it, I had to snap down push down on it uh, and it'll and it'll come back down um, it, it's it, there's a uh, an adjustment on it there's a, a knob let me pop it off this tripod there's actually a knob on it that you can adjust that you can set it it's uh, settings one through five and that controls your speed so you can go extremely slow actually they have a turtle on it and or you can go as fast as the uh, the rabbit you can go up and it's it, it's sort of like putting it into sport mode um, it, it, so there's all kinds of control on it, uh, and and that's it. And I'm going to tell you what I I have really had a lot of fun with this. I've flown today, I, yesterday quite a bit. Um, what was, what was your impression when you first saw it though, versus what you've had a chance to fly it now? Let's talk about that for a second because I know I when I first saw it I was thinking ah you know and I've you know a lot of people that I talk to are kind of like ah you know I got I got an RC. But I think I think your opinion changed, right? Well, I'm going to tell you what. When I saw it, I don't play games. I'm not a, a game player, a uh, game console player. Um, but I I just thought back to my old Atari 800XL and 1200XL days of flying Red Baron or whatever and having a joystick. And and, and I don't know, that, that caught me. And it, that just seeing it. And, and then now that I have it and the control that I have and – you have so much more control, and I think everybody knows when you push the stick forward to go forward, you sometimes yaw a little bit, and if you drift off course uh, with with this, uh, you you push forward, it goes forward. If you want to yaw a little bit, you're going to twist a little bit. Um, it, it's just you have so much more control. You can operate the camera from it. Um, one thing that I was asked: Are you do you does this replace the rc it does not replace the rc you're still tied onto an rc um however uh the joystick con connects to your device uh by bluetooth um, there's no lag i didn't notice any lag it, it it's responsive that's that's freaking awesome uh, there's a couple of questions in here william r says have you tried it with tripod precision tripod comma precision and sports modes on the controller Okay, now I have not had it enough to, I've been trying to bounce between aircraft. I've used it on the Phantom 4 Advanced, the Mavic 2 Pro, and the uh, Mavic Pro. Um, so I haven't really dug in deep. I've only had it for just, you know, not even two days. And uh, so I, I really can't answer some of the specific questions about that. Okay, cool. That's what the, that's what the dial's for. I know we didn't cover that in the video because we just had... I mean, we were out there with him for an hour and a half and we made a six minute video but the dial that telly pointed out i mean if you have that thing on rabbit it's essentially like flying it in tripod mode and if you put that thing all the way up to five or whatever the top speed is it's like flying in sport mode so all the adjustments are right there on on the fluidity itself so you're not flipping modes or changing anything uh, randy has so, yeah yeah so and yeah. and james said rabbit but what he meant to say was turtle uh, turtle. So tur turtle is like tripod mode and it, as you make these adjustments, it actually pops up on the 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 Fluidity app. Looks a lot like the DJI Go app or the Go 4 app. Um, same sort of like camera view and the camera settings and things like that. What's neat is as you change this dial, this uh, sensitivity dial, it actually put, comes up on the screen. It'll say sensitivity one, sensitivity two, sensitivity three. So it tells you where you're at. But yeah, you put it on five on that rabbit and it's gonna boogie. It's gonna move. What's nice though, 
is it's not just slowing down the aircraft, it's slowing down the rates. And so your expo and stuff like that, everything just becomes really buttery and smooth. And so it's, um, it's like a, it's, I mean, it's like tripod mode, you know, you're basically um, just dumbing it down and, and making it to where all these movements uh, become subtleties versus, you know, very direct and linear. So yeah, um, the way that Scott was describing it is when you want to like get out to your location in a hurry, throw it over to five, get on out to that windmill or whatever that point of interest is that you want to photograph. And then once you get there, dial it back to, you know, three, two, or even one and do, do the moves that you want. Uh, and then the, you know, if you're in a hurry to get home, you know, slide it on over, put it in uh, in rabbit and hit the gas, come on home. Yeah. One, one's real slow. One's no, real I, slow. I, I have a question. See if you get to, if you, you have gimbal control on that and everything, right? Correct. Yeah, so if you go into your, off. Oh, okay. Oh, that's nice. You see, uh, it, is, is my, if, if, if my camera is on, if it's following my audio, you'll see there's a, there's a, a little dial here and go figure down tilts the camera down up oh. tilts the camera up, not left and figure, right. Right. It's, it's, yeah, you're not having to kind of translate in your head or, you know, reverse movements or anything like that. Up is up, down is down. Um, it, like I said, it, it does exactly what you think it should do. What a concept. Uh, this is a guy who's and, gone into space four times. When you go into space, really, when you go into space, you want something to do what it's supposed to do. So when he sits down and designs something, that's 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 what it is. I mean, it's it's intuitive to begin with. But now, if you adjust, if you adjust your radio controls in 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 the, in the controller, like if you play with your your expo and your game and all that kind of stuff, will it translate to the stick at all? Yeah, oh, so if you adjust your expo, like if you go into your flight control settings and actually adjust your expo and, and adjust your curves, will it translate into this? I think yeah. what what ends up happening is whatever you have your whatever you have your preferences in your flight parameters set, and I'm kind of assuming here, so let's I do want to verify this. But if you've got if you've got your aircraft to set up to fly a certain way, and you've got your expo curves set a certain way, that's going to be how that aircraft is. What this is doing is flying within those parameters. Okay, good, cool. I think that that is factual. I would guess the same. Yeah, yeah. I would guess because yeah, and and I don't know what kind of what kind of logic is taking place on the sensitivity dial. Um, you know, because my guess it, is that the expo settings within the stick itself. It must be. It must have its own oh. expo settings that it's working within. Because well, it's that's... effective. It's very effective. That's one thing that I that I had planned on trying. I hadn't had a chance, but uh, because when you do move the camera, you, you have to go easier. You, it it kind of moves a little too quick. So I definitely need to dumb down some. That's there. that's what I was kind of wondering because I have mine set pretty smooth. Yeah, it was like, but I'm sure you can. It's it's I'm sure you know. And actually, it it really has to do with the, how far you move it. But you know, mm. you're used to the knob. Okay, you know, instead of using this, and and so I think you know, you go a little further, you're like, oh, it doesn't, and then boom, it's it's already moved. So cool. Yeah, I'll, I'll tell you what, I've had so much fun with this. Um, it, it's just, it's gave me another dimension to flying, and, and I've I've really enjoyed this. This just brought something new to the game. Another conversation that I had earlier was. Uh, with Paul Murray, uh, he's in our chat group down there. Uh, he just, not recently, it was a year ago, he did this video, um, and it's receiving some awards right now. It's a music video, and it, it's uh, it's about, oh, God, I can't remember what it exactly, it's about some men that lost their lives in out in Lake Huron, uh, and this girl is on this lighthouse singing to these men, and, and, and they brought him in to do a couple of shots where he's orbiting around her. And in my conversation with him, it was like, hey, dude, for this, you don't even need to do the set up the orbit or anything like that. You just get up in the air and you're doing a precision twist right there with this with this uh, FT aviator right there. Uh, figure eights should be like super easy now, as far as I'm concerned. Orbits, super easy. Forget all the app stuff that you can use. Just go fly with this thing. That's what I was doing this afternoon. I was out there kind of doing like boxes and 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 uh, orbiting around a tree just for something to do. And and uh, it, it's very responsive. And, and you can make it do what you could put that, like Scott said, you can put that drone where you want it to be. 
and, and so much easier than uh, the, the lack of cross coupling makes a huge difference i mean that's yeah. really honestly like you know i i had i played with it for like 10 minutes while we were there because i was tired from holding the camera the whole time but like even in the 10 minutes you can feel you can feel the fact that like you know what commands you're giving you're giving the drone there's no there's no question of it and i mean like i fly everything i fly fairly manual um and like this makes sense it just it makes sense when you give it yaw it goes it yaws yeah that's awesome uh it seems like there was there, well, there was a race in the chat group <laughs> <laughs> jeff bernard and william r were talking about who's going to buy it first well it looks like jeff went ahead and just bought it and william's got his credit card ready i don't know what you're waiting for william the link it's not it's not a, a uh, it's not an affiliate link but i put a link in to it down in the uh, description down there but uh, uh no william i i haven't tried any automated modes or anything like that with the uh with it i don't think telly would have been the only guy that has mine's actually sitting at my doorstep and i'm not home so and, and i can't say that i have either i've, I've just been trying it i've been having fun that's just you're having fun flying yeah. is a thing, and who wants to do autonomous stuff when you can actually fly this exactly. thing? I just, I don't know. It, I, it's it's a you get this, and it, it, I don't know. It, it, I want to leave this conversation and go fly right now. I really <laughs> <do>. <laughs> if you're closer, I come see. I come watch. Let me try that. Give me that. Uh, uh, you try. <laughs> Anybody so, close? Come fly with me. Clear for it. Hey, nice. I'll point. I'll point out. It was kind of interesting, kind of uh, to piggyback on what Telly and Tommy were just talking about. Uh, one of our one of our uh, drone owners network admins um, named Mark Mulkey uh, came out with us. Uh, he's the guy that lives in Austin, so he drove down uh, to Houston from Austin, and he brought his wife with him. And she's not a flyer. She, you know, she, it's not her thing, right? No big deal. Hey, my wife didn't either. She, you know, gives this much about, you know these fun things that we do. But um, Scott said, hey, his wife's name is Laurel. He said, hey, Laurel, why don't you try it out? And she was a little hesitant because, you know, the, she felt, you know, hey, I don't, I don't know if I want to, you know, give it a go with all these people around, whatever. She put one of these in her hand and she was able to just pick it up and fly. And it, there, wow. was, there was like very little learning curve. And, um, you know, what's kind of neat about this um, and just the enjoyment of flying, if you ever like to incorporate if you've got kids if you've got um you know uh, friends or whatever that you know hey so they're not experienced flyers whatever to go out with them and something like this you can put this in their hand and they can actually experience what it's like to command um you know a multi-rotor aircraft in the airspace and it's it's very logical to them it makes sense and it's easy to do and so um if you're into that at all about spreading the joy of the hobby and of this uh of flying what a neat way to be able to do that you know, if you've got kids and you want to teach them how to fly, yeah, you know, teach them how to fly with a traditional controller. Um, I'll tell you, though, they're going to think this is much cooler. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> it just looks cool. I'm, to I'm totally digging it. Uh, yeah, Canadian Drone Hub said it just right. Everybody, if you would, please do us a favor. Hit that like button. In fact, if you would... Okay. We really would appreciate it if you guys would leave a comment afterwards, uh, whether you like the, whether you think you're interested in this or not, or whether uh, you'd like more information about it. Uh, Scott would love to uh, come back on our show again and talk about this product. So if you guys are more interested in uh, seeing us, we, I think it would be a really good idea because we just literally, or you guys, I haven't got one, but you guys literally just got one of these. I think it might be a good idea to come back and revisit it after you've had a chance to go out and do some footage with it. And then we put up some, uh, some foot, some of you guys' footage. I mean, what do you guys think of that? It's a good idea. I, I received mine, um, the day before I had to leave to come to, to Miami for work. And so, man, I, you know, there's, there's so much I want to do and play with, uh, with this thing. And I, I've literally had no time and it's driving me crazy and <laughs> I can't wait to be able to get some free time so I can, you know, get this plugged in and, and have a go at it. I'm just glad that I was able to, you know, when we were doing the video, be able to have hands on then because, uh, you know, otherwise I'd be really frustrated having this and not having a chance to fly because I'm stuck at work. Novice Squad said those, says, uh, those guys would buy two. <laughs> uh, Jeff, the, the uh, comment section will, uh, will pop up as soon as the video is over. It'll give you a chance to comment, put your comments in there. And just uh, in the overall scheme of, uh, of YouTube, uh, apparently comments are really, uh, 
I mean, likes and dislikes and all that stuff counts, and, and the amount of uh, interaction that happens on the chat group, that counts, but it really, really counts big when you guys are commenting in there. So when the video ends, if you guys can throw a comment in there, we would definitely appreciate that as well. And hit, and hit the like button. And while you're at it, subscribe and hit the notification okay. bell. Okay, enough about us. So back to the FT, FT Aviator. Uh, $299 right now. Um, this is a pre-order. They have them, from what I understand, they have them in stock, and they are going to start shipping uh, July 1st, though, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong because I'm kind of sputtering here. July 1st, it goes up to 450. 450. So if you're at all interested or you have any questions, I mean, we're here for you right now. And if we can, if we can answer those questions, we'll happily do our best to answer those questions. But you've got a short period of time to get in on this 299 deal. So if you're interested in this at all, Hit us up with questions. We'll answer them as quick as we can here, and we will get you guys going if you're if you're really wanting to buy this thing. Two ninety nine is a heck of a deal. Um, the guys on this panel have been flying for years, and for them to be this impressed says a lot. You know what? One thing that we didn't really uh, touch on, um, and since mine is not connected to the aircraft, I'm just going to have to do it uh, on the on the power sequence. Um, this this little area right here is your situational awareness area um what this does it uh, it's got a series of leds in it and it'll actually tell you the relative position of the drone to your home point where you are and so just while you're flying and you know you got your thumb in it and you you know you can tell basically like the like the little radar graph that's on the uh on the rc uh it puts it right here it puts it right there so you know what, what you see in the app um, it's all right there, and so you can always tell where your aircraft is in your relative position. Um, FYI, when you go to power this thing up, um, it is like the DJI power-up sequence. It is a push once and then push and hold, uh, and it powers up, just like any of our smart batteries that we're so used to and radios. So I'm going to power it up, but watch watch right here, and you'll see what I'm talking about. The, it'll, as it initializes, it'll, it'll let those lights dance a little bit. So I'm going to press and then hold, and then you ought to see the lights come on, and... Did they? Yeah, they're going. They go. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? Um, obviously, it's a dual was... ring. It's a dual ring, right? It is a dual ring. It's a red and a blue. Right. One for the red. camera, I believe, and one for the the actual location of the drone in the airspace. Um, I forget, I I forget to... now. Yeah, I know. I, I forget now too. Um, there is a reason there's two colors, though. There's a reason there's two colors, uh, and then the the F here, the fluidity logo, that actually illuminates as well. Uh, to show that you are connected to uh, dead man. Well, it, it just it show it shows that you're connected to the app. That's the capacity of dead man, also though. I don't remember. I just I, I just edited, that I edited it out of Scott. It's a it's a capacity of dead man for when you're actually holding the stick. So it knows. Well, that that it illuminates, and so you know that you you know that you're in it, um, and then as well as so the double ring. It's so you can't like say you were not holding it and you were to bump like you had you had it in this hand and you bumped the stick with something else your drone's not going to make a movement without your hand actually touching the joystick oh cool so if you notice like when it's i mean when you have it on if you let go of it it'll not light up and when the second you touch it it lights up well so this he one said that that's this doesn't because it's not connected to anything right now right it must be when you're connected in the app but it, yeah. it's an it, it's a toggleable option also he said the dead man is hmm. That's some astronaut stuff right there. There you go. Oh, and uh, this is a 1,550 milliamp uh, hour battery. Um, it, uh, they did a run test on it, and it went for, I think it was 31 hours. <laughs> Trust me, it's going to last longer than you. Cool. Oh, and uh, that's a USB-C right there, and it does charge via the USB-C, um, which, you know, if you've got any of, like, the Mavic... Uh, um, Mavic 2 series of, uh, of copters. Uh, there is a USB-C cable included with your copter. Now you've got another one that's included with your FT Aviator, uh, and that goes right to a USB Type uh, you know, A, and so you can charge that on anything you want. Um, and then you get, you know, it shows your pro progression of your charge. Um, what else? What else? What else? That is a return to home button there, and that is a um, automatic takeoff button there. Um, Trying to think, are there any other cool things that popped up when I was? Uh, oh, um, 
when there's a firmware update available for this thing. And when I when I first you know connected mine and powered it up, it said firmware update available. Uh, it it all it goes through the Bluetooth. It's super fast. It's a it's really a non-issue. Uh, it does its thing. Progress shows, and then boom, you're done. And it's it's a it's it's very simple, and it's a it's an easy non-issue kind of a thing. So yeah, it will update uh, when you know when when updates are available. Uh, kind of. A- I'm kind of throwing, te- Tommy, I'll let you talk to you in just one second. Telly, can you pull up the photos of your friend, uh, the three photos that you posted in the group and uh, I'm share? I'm sorry, Curtis, I can't. I don't have it on, uh, on oh, this okay. computer. Okay, not a problem. Uh, can you bring it up, Curtis, and just share your screen? Are you connected to Facebook on yours? Uh, well, I'd have to run it through OBS. Give me a second. If you guys can talk for a second, I can I can possibly pull that okay, up. Hey, also, uh, the, dead man, the dead man was a feature on the, on the uh, demos that we flew. But not on the production one. Oh, okay. Good to know. So it didn't it didn't make it into uh, production. Got it. Got it. Got it. Okay. So let me uh, let me see if I can throw this up here. I think this will work. Give me one second to do this, and then transition. And let me turn this off for just a second, and see if that works. I want to get to these are photos at uh, beauty shots that Telly took. So here's a gentleman right here that uh, Telly was out flying with. Uh, yeah, his name's Ray, and, and uh, I, I asked him what he thought. Now, he is a former pilot, and he really enjoyed it. He said that anybody that's flown, they're going to love it. So here's a little bit of the connectivity we were talking about for you guys. Um, one of the things that I wanted to bring up also real quick was earlier when Telly was um, showing you the throttle control, uh, you heard some clicking sounds. What that clicking sound was was not the throttle. There's an adjustment on the thumb, and oh. and it's to kind of lock right. the thumb piece down in. Uh, we'll, we'll we'll go to Randy here in just a second. But now that I'm looking at this photo, he's not using it also. But this is uh, this is how it's all set up. Uh, in this particular case, he's got uh, his his uh, Mavic RC set up, and of course, Telly has this stuff modded. We don't know anything about that. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, that's that's kind of what the setup looks like, and he has it on a tripod right there. So yeah, yeah, that's that is a pretty awesome little setup right there. So yeah, is I just, that going, I'm not seeing that, Curtis. Are you just playing that through OBS? Now? Yeah, I'm I'm just playing it through OBS. Sorry, that's the problem with OBS is the guys no that are on the panel are not able to see that. So yep, sorry no about problem. that. Just making sure it's working. Yep, yep, everything's going out. So I'm I'm out monitoring it on the other computer. A couple other questions to. Uh, uh, in the chat group, let's see. Uh, is there a place to connect a phone or tablet? Yes, and I just showed that to you, John. Not not a problem there. Uh, great question about tablet, access to the. Uh, a great Paul has a a great question is about access to battery and can you replace with another in the field? I don't know. With ten hours, do you really need to? I mean, thirty one hours. Thirty thirty one hours. hours. Yeah, I I don't think you really need to replace it. Uh, William R says, do they have their own app or just, <clears throat> so, <clears throat> excuse me, got caught up there. William, yes, they have their own app. So, uh, you're, you're on the phone, you're using their app, which, uh, they have the SDK. So they have complete access to everything. So yeah, no, they have their own app going on. Uh, does it, does anything look different? Do we have a photo of the app anywhere? I guess I could go back to that photo real quick. Uh, the app's a little different, but it looks a lot like, it looks a lot like go for uh, Paul Murray says, how hard to use with a tablet or crystal sky with this? Uh, we did have a talk uh, with uh, Scott about crystal sky. It's not quite, I think he said it's not quite ready with, for crystal sky, but they are just around the corner from being able to enable crystal sky with this. Uh, let's see. Novice quad. Yep. yep. That is a work in progress. Uh, novice quad says, I'd like to use it with a seven inch tablet. Wonder if this is compatible with a Tello. Uh, not sure. Um, uh, has anybody seen if I don't have a Tello, so I can't tell you on Tello. Man, I don't. I know Mavic Air. I don't know about the Tello. I don't see how it would because the Tello does not connect by Bluetooth. Oh, Wi-Fi. Yeah. No, it, no, it's mm-hmm. yeah, it's Wi-Fi. I'm sorry. Okay, I don't know. I'll have to try that. I have one. Yeah, the way this works is this goes this goes Bluetooth to your phone and right. your phone or tablet however you want to say it. And then your phone or tablet is connected to your DJI radio the way that it normally would be. Yeah. Corey Jacobs says not compatible with the Tello at this time. Yeah. I was thinking that it because it, the Tello has its own app. So that's, I didn't know. Uh, hey, I've got, I've got a shot of the app. Um, 
kind of a shot of the app I can share with you on my screen. Stand by. Uh, let me know. Can you guys see that? Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I, I know it's not great, but um, that's on my iPad, and uh, you can see uh, the app. That is that's not the Go Four app. That is the um, that is the Fluidity app, and you can see. I mean, it's it's it it looks very familiar. If you're used to uh, Go or Go Four, this this is going to feel um, this is going to feel very familiar to you. It's going to it's going to seem you know like there's zero learning curve. When you need to adjust camera settings, you're going to know exactly where to go. When you um, want to dive into menus, you're going to know exactly where to go. It's it it's it's going to make a lot of sense to you. What the, the C buttons on the back that you can program? Are they on the stick or are they just on the... There are, there are customizable buttons on the stick, I believe. There's one okay. customizable button on the stick. Um, it is on the right-hand side of the stick here. Okay. And uh, that that can do... Um, I, I have mine set up to, uh, to center focus the camera um, because, you know, when I fly my Mavic 2 Pros, um, I have uh, my C2 set up to center focus. And so I wanted that feature on this. And so I just, there's a, uh, when you go into the settings for the FT Aviator, um, you can go to the customizable button. There's a drag down list. You can pick what you would like that button to do. Wow, I picked it to be super focused. Um, if you're someone that's flying, uh, I have an Inspire One Pro as well. Um, if I was using this on the Inspire One Pro, I would probably have that set up to do my landing gear. Yeah. That, that is a selectable feature. And so boom, you hit that gear comes up you know hit it awesome. again gear comes down novice novice quads ask uh how does it connect to the remote via bluetooth or so it's a combination actually the way this whole thing hooks up i mean let me jump back over to this photo and then maybe one of you guys can uh, address this let me get back to this so your rc is hooked up and then you come out of the rc into your phone or tablet and then the the uh your, your normal rc when i say like in this particular case what we're showing here is the RC for the uh, Mavic, uh, Mavic Pro. Um, you, you hook into that, and then from there, the uh, FT Aviator hooks in via Bluetooth. Right. right, so it connects normal, you're just using a different app, and you're connecting to this by Bluetooth. Basically, that's what that format is. Okay, uh, let's see. Jeff Bernard says, go dead, sorry. I don't know what that means. Uh, what a power bank. The battery goes dead. Oh. Oh, can we can we replace it when it does one day? Um, has anybody tried to open it up and look at the battery compartment yet? You can't. Oh, as far as inside of here? Yeah. No, I haven't. I haven't opened it up. I mean, um, I will tell you. Um, it looks like. Well. Stand by. Standing by. So everything is put together with um, with stars. So all these are, you know, so if you've, you know, Torx. if, yeah, I mean, they're Torx. I mean, if, uh, if you've got, uh, if you've got a nice uh, tool set, you're going to be able to get into this. Um, I will go out on a limb and say it's going to void your warranty. Um, but, you know, hey, I, Telly, Telly has replaced batteries in his Phantom remotes. I've never had to replace a battery in my Inspire remotes or any of my Mavic series remotes, Mavic 2 remotes. Um, I haven't, After, I haven't run across that yet. I didn't, I didn't have to replace the battery. My, my problem was the board. I had to replace the In a reflow board. I soldered uh, yeah, the IC. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what's right. wrong with those, those, there, it's not the batteries. It's the yeah. connection. Yeah, sorry. I, I remember you were doing some work on that. So. Okay, I want to clarify real quick. Uh, Carolyn just jumped in and says, battery is not replaceable. There you go. Not replaceable. Um, but oh. I, I don't know that there would be a need to replace it because the battery lasts so long on this per charge, your charge cycle should be fairly low. You know, you're not going to be you know, throwing this thing on the, on the, on the cooker, you know, every time you fly, it doesn't need it. It, it, it just lasts so long that you're not going to be having to charge this as much as you charge all your other batteries. Here's an interesting yeah, a low discharge rate. So it's going to last a lot longer too. Here's an it's interesting, interesting question. Zen Badger says, are they at the risk of being sold out soon? Well, yeah. Did you read <laughs> So William's going to buy one. Novice Quads are, are now buying one. Uh, let's see. Jeff Jeff Bernard bought one. So yeah, uh, they're going to be sold out soon. I would I would get them in there. Also, all touch interactions on the app GUI function also. Uh, that was a question. Um, yeah, the app, the app GUI functions very similar to the Go Forward GUI. Yeah. 
it's very familiar. It's going to look like home to you. It, it just makes sense. I think the key thing here is that you're not really using the app. You're using the stick. I mean, I, for lack of a better term, you're using the FT Aviator to do everything. Whereas before we would go into the app and do orbits and stuff like that. You're, you're actually just, this is more about flying as opposed to, and your camera controls are right there at your hand as well. Uh, yeah, but I mean, you're still, you're still, you know, looking at your camera settings, you're looking at your framing and stuff like that. So yeah. all that's going to look so familiar to you. It's not going to, it's not going to be foreign at all. It's going to look like what you're used to. And it works I mean, and it functions the same way too. It looks just like the Go4 app. I mean, it's amazingly similar. So like, Good. honestly, when he first opened it up, I was like, I didn't know I was in their app. It, it reminds me of like, um, if you've ever like gone from like Go4 over to the DJI Pilot app, and the DJI right. Pilot app is uh, very similar, but it's like a, a more streamlined version. That's really kind of the same concept with the FT Aviator app. It looks extremely familiar, but it looks like it's the streamlined version, more you know, uh, kind of uh, more function based, and you know, it doesn't doesn't waste a lot of a lot of room with stuff you don't need. You know? Lauren says uh, the tilt, the camera tilt, variable or fixed rate, variable. Variable. It is yep. variable. Yep. Um, that's all adjustable through the settings, um, and it is uh, as you as you um, when you first get it out of the box. If you if you jam the the camera tilt down, that camera is going to tilt really quickly. It's going to come down quick. But as I played with it, I noticed that if I just gently bring it down, even without adjusting it, if I just you know gently bring it down, it'll slowly feather it down. But that's not the way to do it. Obviously, we you, you want to go into the settings. You want to dumb that down to where you have a greater amount of, you know, of control over that camera tilt so that it's nice and feathered. And Randy likes his dumbed down a lot. <laughs> Man, <laughs> hey, I'm not real no, smart. I, got, I know I got my drone back. I got my drone back from the other day and I flew it for like the first time. And I was like, oh, this is really slow. Yeah, I borrowed I borrowed a, a Mavic 2 from James uh, for a job. And yeah, I went through and I, man, because that's what, that's what I do. I, oh, I, fly for sure. for, yeah. I fly for picture, man. I'm not sporting around and stuff like that. And so, yeah, man, I, I make these things really gooey, you know, I'm used, to like, I'm used to like feathering it. And I was actually in Ireland and it's the first time I've flown it since then. And I like, I went to fly it and I'm like, come on, tilt up, tilt up. What is going on? Oh, Randy, thanks. And then I, I, I jammed it and it was like, whoop. I mean, it was smooth. It made sense, but like, and then it I had to stop. Yeah. You can let go of it and it just smooth right out. It was great. Yeah. Well, I, like I said, I'm not real smart, so I have to I have to program things to to be smart for me. You're an audio <laughs> guy. I get it. Exactly. Those, those audio guys. Uh, let's see. They want me hey, to. Let me point out because this is actually super cool. Uh, we chatted with Scott Parazinski, uh the other day, and we're like, oh, Scott, what have you been doing? You know, and uh, he has uh, been out at the. Uh, where they're where they're actually doing all the dis distribution and stuff like that for this product. We said, oh, Scott, what have you been up to? And he says, oh, I've been flying all day. Oh, you've been flying all day? That's pretty cool. He goes, no, no, no. Me and another guy are testing every product before it goes out the door. Oh, yeah, I remember that part of the conversation. What? Yeah, they, they, are, they are taking each of these things, they're plugging them in, and they're testing each of them and doing a quick test flight to make sure that all functions operate like they're supposed to. Um, and I'm, it, it just seems amazing to me. It's amazing that each one of these units is hand tested and possibly hand tested by the astronaut himself, which is <laughs> kind of cool, you know. But after meeting him, that doesn't surprise me at all. Man, that guy's thorough. He's very yeah. thorough. Like he's he's not going to be comfortable sending something out unless he's one hundred percent sure it's like ready to go out. Awesome. Yeah, that's be. that's just that's how he is, and it's uh, it's impressive. It was impressive being able to hang out with him and stuff, and fly with him. He he is he's a pro, and it's uh, it's 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 exhibited in everything that he does and everything that he makes, and so it's been it's been kind of a treat. In talking with Scott the last uh, the first time that we interviewed him, and then we've talked to him a few times since, you know, offline and kind of behind the scenes. Man, the guy's an overachiever. It's like four times, four times in space, writes a best-selling book, climbs Mount Everest twice. Okay, let me correct. He climbed once and failed, then he tried, then he tried again, and the second time he succeeded. Then another, another best-selling book. He's a surgeon. It's like, slow down a little bit. Oh no, I want to invent something now that works with robotics and surgery. And oh, by the way, I can also use this for my drones. Right. 
Yeah. <laughs> uh, so I'll, I'll share a funny story. When we were out uh, with with them um, in, in, in the fluidity team, when I first met Scott, um, we kind of, you know, we all kind of knew a little bit about each other before we had our face to face. And when I first met Scott, I, I work in I work in uh, in network news and television. And uh, and Scott says, oh, hey, man, it's good to finally meet you. And I said, oh, yeah, good to meet you, too. And he said, man, your job must be really interesting. I, I bet you get to travel you know, all the time, all over the place. And I'm sitting there thinking, this is an astronaut. And he's like, you know, saying, oh, your job must be interesting because you get to travel. I'm sitting there thinking, well, they don't let me leave the planet or anything, but you know, it's a, it's a pretty cool job. You know, the guy's so humble and so caring, um, not to mention obviously all the accolades and things like that. I mean, that's, that's pretty evident, right? But just as a person, he's very kind and uh, he's very courteous and has been very gracious with us and with his time and things like that. But what's neat is that all that passion that he has and the care that he has for the details um, comes through and you know it's just been really a joy to be able to um, kind of experience this this new way of doing things with him so that's that's been really really awesome uh let's see uh let's jump over here see if we got anything else so much uh, Zen says he's got some friends who are disabled and in chairs. They can't fly drones right now. Soon. Oh, by the way, Zen just said he bought Zen Bar Badger. Just said he bought two of them. Cool. We're, nice. We're, nice. Why didn't we do an affiliate link again? What was that? <laughs> not our style. That's because it's not our style. That's right. Um, so I let's see. I'm looking for more question here. Good good job, guys. Thanks to here says Jeff Bernard. Uh, Zen says, I, I am keeping an eagle eye out for refurbs. Okay. Idaho Quadcopter says, that makes sense. There's no room for mistakes in space. Oh, Val's life's here. Hi, everyone. Hi, Val. Uh, let's see. Phantom Flight 101 is here. Uh, Canadian Drone Hub has always been here. That's cool. Uh, customer support will be humans or all email and in the USA. Okay, it's an astronaut. He's in Houston. Where do you think customer support's going to be? right here in the good old USA. In fact, it, I don't know this for a fact, but I wouldn't be surprised if Scott answered the phone. <laughs> he's that he's that kind of guy. I mean, we're, he's you know when we we first started when when we first started working with him and we call him, he did answer the phone. I call and he's you know, sometimes I get his, I get the secretary some sometimes I get the uh Carolyn at marketing, but I get Scott sometimes too. So, he's the guy's freaking awesome. Um, really, really cool involved. dude. He's very involved with the project, and he, he he cares. He really does. So, yeah, customer support will be humans and not a problem there. And uh, I'm not sure about all email. I mean, uh, it's a new company, so everything's evolving. I mean, what we say today and what the way things are working today, of course, you're going to get USA support. You know, if they become a billion-dollar industry, who knows what's going to happen at that particular point. So I, I don't want to speculate beyond that. Uh, but Zen says, I am going to make a story on that. And with my friend, I will be on this sh show another day. Oh, Stig. Oh, okay. Stig is talking about Zen. Uh, Stig has a friend in, in uh, Norway, and we've kind of chatted about this. And he's going to be coming on with his friend who's uh, somewhat disabled and is going to be making some good use of this. Stig's also working up some 3D printed stuff to m be able to mount this right on a wheelchair, which will be really, really kind of awesome. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. Next time you're in film, let me know. Let me you know. Fly with her. All right, cool. Um, so Scott, Scott is going to be handling customer support in the beginning. So okay. you will be with him if you have problems. And then uh, the rest of the customer support is U.S. based. Awesome. So, so there's your answer there. Uh, Tommy, I, I realized I said hang on for one second a little bit ago. Did I? Did we cover the question that you were going to ask or something that you were going to present? It was, I think the question was about the C buttons and then, but also I did, I think I saw a question about what manual settings, can you do any manual settings when you guys were talking about like, like all the stuff, like it's all very similar to the DJI go Four app. Um, I noticed that like, yeah, of course we're flying, but we're also taking pictures and me, the way I take pictures, I, I manual mode everything just because I just like playing with stuff. It's more fun and it's more, <laughs> a little more in depth. Can you, you're not really accessing anything via the, the, the actual stick, right? But all that, all those settings are in the, in the, uh, it's, it's all, all right here. Stick. So, um, right above uh, your, uh, the little sensitivity wheel with the little tortoise 
and the rabbit. Right above there is a is a, a dial, and that dial is also a selector. So you can push on it, and it selects, and you can dial through. Um, what I've noticed is that's your cam. It's got a little picture of a camera with a gear right there. So that's your camera settings, and you can ah. actually kind of slide through and say, okay, I'm going to go to ISO. You slide over to ISO. It highlights ISO on the app. You select it, and then as you turn it, it adjusts your ISO. You you know select you know, select it again. It gets out of that you know out of that setting and then you can scroll over to other camera settings and then you select which one you want and then you can make the adjustment. So really, really that's simple. really cool. But it's all right there. That's what's groovy about it. Um, another thing that we didn't point out over on this side here, you see a double set of buttons. Um, the top one is for still photos. The bottom one is to start and stop video. It's all right, right. there. So if you're right. if you're right handed, if this is your dominant hand and you're holding the actual uh, flight stick with your right hand, your left hand, your left thumb would be right there on those, you know, still button right. or, you know, start and stop video. Right. Record, yeah. Wow, that's cool. I like that. So one of the things I hit the one of the things I'd like to uh, kind of bring up real quick, we have a lot of guys in the in the chat that are talking about buying this and they're interested. Idaho Quadcopter says he plans on doing a review of the FDA Aviator on his channel as soon as uh, his arrives. He's pretty damn stoked about it. Um, and we're glad we can bring you this information. What I'd like to see is some of you guys who get the FT Aviator contact us at the email provided below and uh, hook us up with some of the footage or some of the behind-the-scenes stuff of you working with this. We would like to uh, kind of promote you guys as well and just show you off on our show. Uh, if, you, uh, if, you, if you do buy one and you want to do a review and you want to talk about it, let us know, and we'll hook you up. We'll, we'll get you on the show, and we'll, we'll make this happen. I think it'd be a great idea. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah, and for sure. I mean, and you know what's neat about this is, yeah, the obvious uh, the obvious way that people are going to fly with this is they're going to handhold it and, and, you know, fly like, you know, what you would think. But what would also be very cool is to see what do other people come up with as far as their rigs. How are they utilizing this quarter 20? What are they doing? What What's their flight setup, you know? We saw we saw uh, Telly's uh, set up with his friend Ray, and man, they had the they had the, the 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 camping chair out. They had the tripod, the thing sitting there. You got a cold drink in the cup holder, and you know there you go. Um, you know we talked about Stig. Stig is going to be making up a rig for his buddy that's uh, that's uh, uh, you know in a, in a wheelchair, and he's going to be developing some some mounts to where this actually attaches to. To his buddy's wheelchair and to see how you know he flies um what are, what are other people doing how are other people flying what are they able to do with this and uh what kind of rigs are they coming up with as uh as as cool ways to to make it a, a better flying experience for them you get an old recaro seat and i'm mounting that thing right in the middle just now we're talking. style oh yeah you get nuts with it Novice are Quads, gonna... Novice Quads, ask about a link. Our, our email link is in the uh, in the description of our video below. So just Drone Owners Network Live at gmail.com. You can send us a link there. Uh, William, thank you very much for sending all the bad drone videos that we need. We definitely appreciate you sending those. <laughs> uh, Jeff Bernard asks, is there a pause button on it, or can that be programmed? I haven't seen one, um, but I will say um, the feature set is growing. And they've made that very clear that they are, um, you know, adding adding more stuff all the time. So um, we're gonna we're gonna see that app and um, you know different things become available uh, through updates. They're they're super energetic about this and they're pushing to get things out quickly. Um, so I think that uh, those kind of suggestions are good. Uh, put those suggestions uh, down below. Put them in the put them you know uh, on on any of the Drone Owners Network series of Facebook groups. Um, you know where you see us talking about these things. Um, we want to we want to share those with with fluidity to where the, they know what people want. You know what what do our listeners want? What do they what do they need? What are the what kind of stuff do they think would make this a better system for how they operate? You know they want to know. They've they've expressed that to us, and uh, we're trying to come up with things that we can think of to make things even better. What do you guys think? How how, how could it be better for you guys? Yeah, so uh, either email us or uh, you know just drop a line in the uh, comments below after the video is over. We we love to hear some some stuff from you guys. All right, so that's it for us. We want to keep this under control. We're we're at our one hour spot right now. So uh, for Randy, James, Tommy, myself, and Telly, we are out of here, and we will see you guys next time. <laughs>